It's like a flavor festival on an almond. Zest Fest. Blue Diamond Almonds. Super flavor. All on a superfood. Happening now. Officials in Kinney County and Atascosa County say criminal activity is up as a result of migrants crossing into the U.S. Coming up, how they are calling on state leaders to help. And because of that surge of migrant crossings at the border, how new bipartisan proposed legislation being introduced by Texas lawmakers in Washington might help. Next. Yet another unseasonably cool day. I'll be back to let you know when we're going to warm up and how much, especially into the weekend. Talk about this drizzle, some sprinkles, and our chance of storms coming right up. It is tax-free weekend. Prepare for the next emergency. This weekend, you can save money on fire extinguishers, axes, even batteries. We'll explain coming up. How recycling your plastics and the Humane Society come together to help celebrate Earth Day here in San Antonio today. The News at 5 starts right now. First at five, Kinney County on the border with Mexico issuing a declaration of disaster over the rise of migrants entering the country illegally. Yeah, the declarations claim that residents have been assaulted, threatened and robbed. But is that really the case? Tiffany Huerta spoke to the county sheriff and judge in Kinney County to find out why they issued the disaster declaration. They've had break ins. They have uh, stolen vehicles. They've been seen cutting fences, property damage, and, and criminal activity. Kinney County Sheriff Brad Coe says these are some of the reasons that led officials to sign a declaration of local disaster. The declaration states in part, quote, the ongoing border crisis has resulted in thousands of illegal aliens invading Kinney County. The criminal activity is definitely up. Uh, the pursuits, the smuggling, the smuggling of persons, uh, the uh, potential there for assault. We're seeing more and more weapons being involved. Coe says law enforcement is stretched thin. We have had deputies who live here shot at. We've had border patrolmen who have been on duty have been shot at. But Kinney um, County Judge yeah. Tully Shahan says they have not had incidents of people being hurt. We've got police reports on the on the stolen vehicles. Uh, the vehicles have been stolen from ranches. Sheriff Coe says they will be asking for additional support from the state. Maybe bring in some uh, National Guard or bring in uh, deputy sheriffs from other counties to assist them. Tiffany Huertas, KSAT 12 News. Yesterday, Atascosa County also signed a declaration of local state of disaster. But today, Atascosa County Sheriff David Soward said the judge has amended it. Soward says they have no reports filed regarding residents being robbed, assaulted or threatened by any migrants entering the country illegally. What they do have is property damage due to vehicles with migrants inside that have gone through fences. Meanwhile, three Texas lawmakers will soon be introducing legislation they believe will help address the situation on the border in a timely manner. Senator John Cornyn and Representatives Henry Cuellar and Tony Gonzalez say they will be introducing the Bipartisan Border Solutions Act. The legislation will create regional processing centers that all three believe will speed up the asylum process for migrants. We want to reduce wait times for people who have legitimate claims and give them an opportunity to present their claim to uh, a, a immigration judge. Um, we want to hire more immigration judge teams and asylum officers so that we can process uh, these claims at the border. Right now, locations for the new centers have not been determined, but Congressman Gonzalez says the Rio Grande Valley and the Del Rio sector are two likely locations. A kidnapping coming to an end on the far west side this morning after the suspect's vehicle had a blowout. It started at a Motel 6 around 930 in the morning where San Antonio police say the victim was robbed at gunpoint and then taken by force. About an hour later, police say a helicopter spotted the suspect's vehicle near Grissom and Calabra Roads. They followed that car to Wiseman Boulevard near Loop 1604. That's where the car had a blowout. Four people, including the victim, bailed out. All four taken into custody. No word what charges are pending, if any. 
A man is recovering after he was shot while leaving a bar early this morning. San Antonio police found him at the McDonald's off of Nacogdoches and O'Connor Roads around 1.30 this morning. They say a woman who was with him but in a separate vehicle actually called 911. Investigators say the man was shot in his torso, but they aren't sure where that shooting happened or who shot him. He was taken to the hospital and at last check, we're told he is expected to be okay. Family, friends, and community members are remembering Dante Wright, a 20-year-old who was shot and killed after a traffic stop in Brooklyn Center, Minnesota. The Reverend Al Sharpton delivering Wright's eulogy today. ABC's Aaron Katursky has more. Oh, freedom. In a week that brought one measure of justice in Minneapolis, the city is mourning another black man killed by police. 20-year-old Dante Wright was eulogized by the Reverend Al Sharpton, reprising a role he played at the funeral of George Floyd nearly a year ago. Peace is the presence of justice. You can't tell us to shut up and suffer. We must speak up when there is an injustice. He and Floyd family attorney Ben Crump were among the hundreds who turned out for a public viewing. Will you watch that video? Your conscience tells you it is the right thing to do to stand up for Dante Wright. Wright was stopped for a minor traffic violation in the Minneapolis suburb of Brooklyn Center when police discovered a warrant for his arrest. As officers tried to detain him, Wright moved back into his car. During a brief struggle, Officer Kim Potter could be heard yelling, oh! before she shot Wright once with her gun. She's charged with second-degree manslaughter, suggesting prosecutors believe she did not intend to kill Wright, but confused her gun for a taser. The killing happened just miles from the spot where George Floyd was killed by former Minneapolis police officer Derek Chauvin. He's a convicted murderer now, living in a cell like this one, segregated from other inmates for his own safety at Minnesota's only maximum security prison. He'll be sentenced in June. As for former officer Kim Potter, she will be back in court next month, but remains out on bail. Today, the governor of Minnesota called for a statewide moment of silence during the start of Dante Wright's funeral, saying that while nothing could bring him back, the work for change must go on. Aaron Katursky, ABC News, New York. An update now on the daily COVID-19 numbers in Bear County. Metro Health reporting 249 new infections and no new deaths. 238 people are positive and they are in the hospital. 83 are in the ICU. 38 are on ventilators. 723,095 people have received at least one dose of the COVID-19 vaccine. 468,294 people are fully vaccinated. WellMed announcing it'll soon be downsizing its vaccination sites to just one location. The company says starting next week, all appointments for the Moderna vaccine will be scheduled for the Elvira Cisneros Senior Community Activity Center on Southwest Military Drive. The change, the result of a decrease in demand and more availability of the vaccine. In January, WellMed received as many as 8 million calls in one day. This month, they're receiving about 1,000 calls a day. And on Sunday, they got only 59. If you'd like to schedule an appointment, call 833-968-1745. The line is open from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. You can also schedule an appointment online. The city of San Antonio received 684 applications for a hospitality grant program from restaurants, bars, and other businesses. But the applications were far from equally spread out all over the city. District 1, which includes downtown, had 180 applications, while the south and west side districts, 3, 4, 5, and 6, had between 25 and 44. The councilwomen who represent those districts were all on a committee that was briefed about that program today. While some suggested door-to-door -door outreach was needed, District 5, Shirley Gonzalez said she did that, and many just didn't want to be involved. Even though we tried to assure them you know, we're, um, we're not the federal government. We're not going to be coming back to you with IRS. We're not talking about um, property taxes. Uh, but people just did not want to turn their information over. Applications for that program now closed, and the city has a little over $13 million to give out. However, the total requests they got topped $25 million.
A reminder now, early voting still underway. And as of yesterday, the early vote count was above 24,700. The mayor's seat, 10 council seats, and two propositions are on the ballot, including Prop B, which would take away the police union's right to collectively bargain. You have until April 27th to cast an early ballot. Election day is May 1st. Oh, definitely cooler out there again today. We started off at 53, well below the average of 60. Then we made it to 64 for the high temperature so far today. And our average high is 82. We'll be there again. It just you need a little patience. Warren's backyard in Del Rio at 62, even Lakey 58. Most of the hill country upper 50s and the vast majority of weather watchers reporting just some mist out there. Mist, a little bit of drizzle coming and going. Seguin 69 near Lavernia at 66, but 58 in Bulverde. This evening we'll see more drizzle and sprinkle activity increasing through the evening hours and especially overnight tonight. We're going to talk about how this is going to affect your Friday th thunderstorm chances and an update on the severe potential and rainfall potential coming up. Tim. Thank you, Adam. On this Earth Day, President Biden announcing a bold plan to fight climate change, reducing carbon emissions by at least half by 2030. He virtually joined 40 world leaders today for the start of the Global Climate Summit and is taking them to task on making changes. ABC's, ABC's Zareen Shaw has the story. President Biden using Earth Day to reestablish America as a leader in fighting climate change. You know, these steps will set America on a path of net zero emissions economy by no later than 2050. Biden hosting 40 world leaders for a virtual climate summit, president. announcing a goal for the country to reduce greenhouse gas emissions by half within the next 10 years. The president's goal is for countries who are the biggest makers of pollution, like China, to make major change too. All of us, all of us, and particularly those of us who represent the world's largest economies, we have to step up. Scientists continuing to sound the alarm. The increased droughts, floods, and hurricanes are directly influenced by global warming and use of fossil fuels, adding that we are running out of time to save our planet. Climate activist Greta Thunberg echoing those same concerns virtually on Capitol Hill today. It is the year 2021. The fact that we are still having this discussion and even more that we are still subsidizing fossil fuels directly or indirectly using taxpayer money is a disgrace. And our Ginger Z near Lake Michigan showing some of the effects of climate change close up. In the last 18 months, this gorgeous lake has been torturing the people that live here. The highest water levels in more than 100 years of records. It has families like the Greys that live in this house behind me, literally living on the edge. In the past year, officials say the high levels of the lake are pushing against land, threatening homes. Experts now calling on a global carbon diet to slow down our planet's warming. Zorin Shah, ABC News, Los Angeles. One man's trash, another man's treasure, or in this case, cats and dogs. The San Antonio Humane Society wants to get its hands on your recyclable goods. The Humane Society reminding everyone on Earth Day, it collects recyclable bottles, boxes, toilet paper rolls, and paper towel rolls. All of the items do not go to waste though. This is like the one for the toilet paper roll and we create and we make a little bag for our cats. We stuff it with treats and they play while they're in their kennels. Um, for the dogs, for the, this is the water bottles. So we stuff some treats in here and then we also put it inside a sock and then like the noise really helps them like get their mind stimulated and it just keeps them busy and entertained. The Humane Society creates new toys every day and they're always looking for donations. You can drop off your recyclable donations in the blue bin. It's right outside of the Humane Society's doors. Got some ideas to make some toys for my pets. There you go. Generators, lanterns, flashlights, they're things you may not know you need until you need them. Like during the February winter storm, for example. What you might want to pick up and put away for a later date during tax-free weekend. That's next. Remember back in February when the power went out and you wished you had more lanterns, batteries, or even a portable generator? Well, now might be the time to do something about it for next time. As 12 on Your Side's Marilyn Moritz tells us, this weekend you pay no sales tax on a lot of things you need for emergencies.
Days without lights and heat. It was a cold hard lesson to be prepared for the worst of nasty weather. You know, the 2020 we had going into 2021, I don't think we can be over prepared anymore on some of this stuff. Spring and summer storms can be brutal too, with hail and lightning and heavy rains. To help Texans prepare, the state is waiving sales tax Saturday through Monday on certain emergency necessities. First, think power outage. No sales tax on portable generators priced less than $3,000. With storms and everything coming through, it's very important to have these backup generators just in case. Batteries, flashlights, coolers to keep your stuff cold. That's coolers priced less than 75 bucks. Also tax free, most fire extinguishers and smoke detectors, as well as tarps for hail damage. Communications are vital in an emergency, so add cell phone chargers and a battery radio to the list. And don't forget the manual can opener and of course that first aid kit. Buying this weekend, you can save yourself some trouble and some money too. If you need to stock up on anything, there are no limits on quantities. There are some price tag limits, however. For the entire list of what's eligible, it's on our website. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. I'm sure a lot of people were making a list right there because we're still kind of stinging from that winter storm. We were not prepared, Adam. Yeah, and uh, you know, it's rather cool out there right now, unseasonably cool conditions, but that's going to change as we get into the upcoming weekend. So drizzle and sprinkles continue to develop out there this evening and tonight. Storm chance by tomorrow afternoon and early evening, then into the weekend. Very agreeable weather for outdoor activities. You've got the green light to do anything outdoors. It's going to be nice. Take a look at the radar right now and you see just a few little sprinkles that have developed and kind of moved across parts of South Texas, south to north. Really not a lot to speak of. Wilson County right now into Guadalupe County, a little sprinkle activity, but this is the kind of action that's hard to detect with the radar because the beam is usually up above these very low hanging drizzle and sprinkle showers or if you even want to call them showers, just that light activity that's very low in the sky and comes from the, just the base of those clouds. So you don't really see it much on radar. I think we'll see a little bit of shower activity fill in on the radar screen overnight tonight and into tomorrow, but yeah, plenty of clouds out there, not just here, but across most of the state. That cloud cover not really doing us a whole lot in terms of moisture and much needed moisture coming from the clouds. I mean, three quarters of the state is considered in drought. But here's the next system. It's off to the west of us. This dip in the upper level flow near Vegas and Los, An Los Angeles there. That's going to move in by about tomorrow afternoon. That should generate just enough lift to actually get rid of these measly sprinkles and develop a few thunderstorms with some embedded downpours. So let's talk about that from now until tomorrow afternoon. Passing drizzle sprinkles, very light showers. Future cast shows that here. Spotty activity, just overall dampness is going to continue and even reduce visibility. We'll have some fog out there as well. 5 a.m. fog drizzle passing sprinkles and light showers, even embedded moderate shower here and there. Futurecast is indicating that at 9 a.m. Then we get into tomorrow afternoon and notice along the Rio Grande, sunny. OK, unfortunately, you'll stay dry, but basically Bear County, I-10, I-37 here and eastward. That's where we have the thunderstorm potential into Friday afternoon and some embedded downpours for a few lucky folks. Unfortunately, it could come at a cost as we may see some severe thunderstorms and that risk is mainly in this yellow area, including Bear County, surrounding counties as well and then points to the east and northeast. But you look at the big picture and we are again right on the edge of that severe thunderstorm and even just general thunderstorm potential. We're right on the edge of it. Most of it here is in parts of East Texas, and that's where the bulk of the rain should fall as a result of the most widespread storms. We're talking Dallas to Houston points eastward, even College Station area could see about an inch of rain around here. Just the sprinkles and rain and light rain probably giving us around a quarter of an inch, give or take. So better than nothing, but not what we need right now to put a big dent in the drought. 64 degrees at the moment. Clouds keeping us cool. Dew point of 53. By the way, tomorrow dew point spike. It's going to be very humid just for tomorrow. Then we get rid of it for the weekend. Look at this 50s in the hill country. 70s though down to the south. Catula 76, 70 in Pleasanton, Laredo right now at 78. 
Tomorrow we'll start our day mostly in the mid 60s, obviously a bit cooler in the hill country and then by the afternoon right up near 80 degrees with the thick humidity. We talk, talked about the drizzle light rain first half of the day. Some storm chances about 30 to 40 percent I think will be the coverage by the afternoon into the early evening. Then we clear tomorrow night and look at the weekend. Sunny, low humidity and pleasant actually upper 80s basically right near 90 degrees for highs this upcoming weekend and a slight chance of rain next weekend, but nothing to get excited about yet. Thank you so much, Adam. All right, Spurs don't have a lot of time to dwell on last night's <laughs> loss. They, they don't want to. to. Right back at it tonight. What's the old saying? There's no place like home unless yeah. you play for the Spurs because he just hasn't done any favors this year. Everything was going great. Now they have to worry about a quick recovery tonight against Detroit. And Tony Rubble can play some golf. We've got the proof coming up. All right, San Antonio Spurs are toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Miami Heat last night at home, but could not pull off the win due to the slumping performance in the second half, more specifically the fourth quarter. The Spurs used their size to hang with the Heat as Jakob Pertl knocked it out to DeJounte Smith to Kelvin Johnson, feeds it right back to Pertl for the dunk. Spurs sharing the ball as Rudy Gay finds Jakob to Derek White, looking to pick up where he left off in Indiana, where he scored six three-pointers, four in the first quarter. This one helped tie the game at 27 all. Then in the second quarter, DeMar DeRozan goes strong to the hoop and gets the floater to fall, and the Spurs have the lead at the half. 53-51. In the third quarter, the Spurs get their largest lead of the game thanks to back-to-back three-pointers from DeJounte Murray, but they go into the fourth quarter still trailing by five. That's where the wheels come off. The Heat burn the Spurs on a 10-0 run behind Tyler Hero, who scored eight of those ten points after his pair of threes. Pop waves the white flag because he knows he has another game tonight as the Spurs fall 107-87 to drop to 12-19 and at home. So what change in the second half where the Spurs were just held to just 34 points, outscored 30-15 to in the fourth quarter alone. Miami kind of picked up in the soft press, dropped back in the zone, kind of slowed us up, um, had us fighting against the shot clock. They rotated well. You know, they kept the ball. They pushed the ball where they wanted the ball to go. Um, you know, we just couldn't capitalize on it. We can't get no rhythm. The nice thing about the schedule, though, is when you have tough games like this, you don't got a lot of time to dwell on it because we'll be right back at it tomorrow. So, um, we got to move on, get our mind or our body right, and, and try and get this win tomorrow. That's right. Tonight is Detroit, 7.30 tip time. Now the Detroit Pistons are coming into tonight's game against the Spurs here in San Antonio after another loss last night in Dallas. This game was supposed to be played in February, but was postponed due to the worst winter weather to ever hit Texas. Luka Doncic scored 30 points, hauled in 10 rebounds, missing his 10th triple-double of the season with 9 assists and the 127-117 victory. The Pistons are the least of the East with the worst record in their conference. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. Former Dallas Cowboys quarterback Tony Romo is now the highest paid sports broadcaster at $17.5 million a year. But he's also a pretty good golfer. He proved it again today on his very first hole in the Corn Ferry Tour event today at the Texas Rangers Golf Club. He chipped in that baby right there for an eagle. And when you take another look at it there, it's nothing he could have done even better. He read the green right. He read the chip. He did it perfect. Unfortunately, later in that same front nine, he double bogeyed and triple bogeyed. <laughs> so he's like the rest of us. Yes, he is human. Some days. <laughs> some days are good, some days are bad. Yeah, that's right. That's great. <laughs> we'll be right back. Damp through the night and the first part of the day tomorrow, then tomorrow afternoon we could see a few thunderstorms. So expect reduced visibility in wet roads during the day. It's just not going to add up to a whole lot of appreciable rain, except for the lucky folks that get some thunderstorms. Into the weekend, sunny, warmer, back into the upper 80s, right around 90 degrees and low humidity. Thanks, Adam, and thank you for watching the News at 5 with us. World News is next. We'll see you back here at 6. Have a good night.